What is up, my Yu-Gi-Oh bros? I'm your host, the RJB0. Welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! in Business Casual. So it's the moment you've all been waiting for, everybody's favorite time of the year, logical ban list season. Also, I suppose, not so logical ban list season in some people's cases. I'm even getting a new haircut for this. I'm super excited. I'm gonna shave. Y'all can hit the thumbs up button for that alone, I am sure. Speaking of thumbs up, I am in the first round of the next great YugiTuber, and if everybody who is watching this video took a moment to pause the video, hit the link in the description below, and then thumbs up the video that they found there, and then come back and watch the rest of this video, then I would basically be guaranteed a slot in the round two of the next great YugiTuber. And that's good for everybody, because the more rounds that I get into, the more publicity I get. The more publicity I get, the more subscribers I get, the more subscribers I get, the more feedback I get, and the more feedback I get, the better the content I can bring to you guys. So everybody wins, especially me. So let's get down to the reason why you guys are all here. The reason why I wanted to make a preview for this ban list is because I've noticed a possibly worrisome thing about the next few months of Yu-Gi-Oh! And that worrisome thing is the huge gap in profit products, big profit products for Konami between the July 15th implementation of the ban list and the August 15th release of the Duelist Alliance. And the reason why that is so worrisome to players like me is that it means that Konami is relying heavily on Primal Origin for profit. And that is scary because it means for the ban list that there are some decks that we might want to see getting hit that probably will not get hit. And I'm sure that you guys, uh, some of you guys at least, are going to be extremely happy about that, but I am, am not because I'm a big curmudgeon. The reason why I notice this pattern is because in the last ban list, Konami primarily hit decks that were strong in the meta, but did not receive a huge amount of support from Legacy of the Valiant, the exception being a couple of the Xyz monsters, but let's face it, hitting Mermails and plus one Fire Fist wasn't exactly a dent in the market of Silent Honor Arc and Exciton Knight. So, the thing that I am kind of looking at is the possibility that Konami will not hit a large number of the decks that we are probably going to be looking for getting hit. Uh, the decks that they are likely to get hit are Mermails. They're likely to hit Tanky because Brugens have essentially run their course at this point. Konami's probably not making a huge profit on the primary market because of that deck, and I highly suspect that that is the entire reason why they have kept Tanky at three for so long. It also means that they're probably going to hit Girgia pretty darn hard because Girgia are extremely good right now, and they also are total profit sinks for Konami. They are likely to hit Infernities, which I'm sure a lot of people would be unhappy about. So that is something that we really need to look out for going into this particular ban list season. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, let me know why in the comment section below. And of course, subscribe for more decks discussion analysis and general Yu-Gi-Oh! shenanigans. Uh, meanwhile, I will have the beginning of the actual ban list according to Logic series coming up later this week for your viewing pleasure, so I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Thank you guys for watching, I'm your host, the RJB0, and I got a jet. See you guys.